The following program contains discussions of thoughts of suicide and suicide support groups that may not be suitable for viewers under 14. Viewer discretion is advised. Here's an AMI This Week shortcut with Shelby Travers. Within Canada, there are over 3,800 deaths by suicide each year. Ben Lakin is the manager of mental health public health for the city of Ottawa. We in the, in, the, in the work in the field of suicide and suicide prevention believe that number to be even higher than 3,800. So suicide prevention is so important because it's just that suicide is preventable. We can help someone and if that person who is struggling knows that there's someone there for them, it increases the likelihood that that person's going to be here tomorrow. That's why the Canadian Mental Health Association started offering Safe Talk, a suicide prevention workshop. Welcome to the Safe Talk this afternoon. Renee Ume is a Safe Talk facilitator. It came about partially because we needed something like that. She tells me what Safe Talk stands for and what to expect. Safe Talk stands for suicide alertness for everyone. The talk stands for the steps that people learn and practice in Safe Talk. Tell, ask, uh, listen, keep safe. It's mostly a presentation, but it, it also has some facilitation parts. It also has lots of videos. It would be great if all persons with thoughts of suicide would tell someone. You have accredited Safe Talk trainer who will present and facilitate Safe Talk. There's always someone called a community support resource who is in the room to support people if they become upset. Hi everyone, my name is Bill, and as Renee mentioned, I'm here to support the process today and uh, happy to answer any questions you might have as we go through. We know how tragic suicides are in our community, and we also know that the role of public health is to promote wellness and prevent health issues. Knowing that role was what drove Ben to make Safe Talk training available to all City of Ottawa employees. With suicide, it is a public health issue. And so we wanted to look at what could we do as a public health unit uh, to help increase awareness that people might be having thoughts of suicide and that it's okay to talk to them and ask that in a safe way and help connect them to resources. But Ben hasn't only championed Safe Talk at work. It all began when he took the course himself. The first time I took it, a light bulb went off for sure uh, to the fact that I have probably had my blinders on in terms of not seeing around me the, the possibility of someone within my life, within my circle of friends, the people I work with might be struggling and having thoughts of suicide. Renee says there are many factors to people missing the signs. Tell is also a reminder to any of us who have thoughts of suicide that we should tell someone. They might miss it because they're too busy. They might dismiss it because they figure, oh no, this person couldn't be thinking about suicide. It's not that serious, right? To facilitate suicide prevention, the timing of the conversation needs to change. Suicide prevention is one of those topics that we talk about usually after someone's died by suicide. Having the conversation will also change the stereotypes. The more that we can train people, the more the awareness we can have within organizations, uh, within our community, the more people you have that are going to be aware to the possibility that someone is having thoughts of suicide and being able to connect them to future help. It also takes a little bit away from the stigma that exists around talking about mental health issues and crisis and suicide. We're letting people know, let's talk about this. This is important and you're important. Safe Talk is offered to everybody 15 years and older. It could be anything going on in people's lives that can, that can make them think of suicide. So, and I think we tend to put people in boxes and that's another hope I have by the end of Safe Talk is that there are no more boxes. It could be anybody can have thoughts of suicide. Ben tells me what he wants everyone to remember, even if you're struggling. Please hold on, people care about you and, and want you to be here, even if you're not feeling like that right now. If you or anyone you know is experiencing thoughts of suicide, please contact the Canada Crisis Line at 1-833-456-4566. When we first filmed this story, it was a very different time. And with isolation measures in place, the conversation of suicide prevention must continue. Ben Lakin joins me now via a Zoom call. Hi, Ben. Hey, thanks for having me. How are people balancing mental health as well as the pandemic? 
due to recent concerns in a rise of suicide due to the pandemic, how are we as a community balancing those concerns as well as the seriousness of the virus itself? I can't think of another time where coping strategies have been so challenged. We are really being pushed in terms of looking at what are the positive outlets that we have to reduce stress and and what are the ways that we can uh, we can balance what's going on, the stress and the anxiety of what's going on with um, with with positive ways. So I think what's really important is we look at what is within the realm of, of health and safety okay for us to do right now. So I think it's really important we balance that by checking in with people, uh, not just friends and family that we're worried about, checking in with everybody in our life mm -hmm. and making sure that for ourselves, we're checking with others for our own sake. So I think that's probably one of the most important things we can look at uh, to try to combat some of the isolation that we're feeling. And um, not also, I want to just put this in there, not shying away from hard conversations right now. A lot of the things I learned in filming the story, as well as participating in Safe Talk myself, were about recognizing the signs of suicide, you know, being really cognizant and alert to all of these things. So with people staying at home and arguably interacting less, um, with what are some of the practices like collectively as Canadians we can do to still stay alert with suicide? What's really important right now is when we say, how are you doing? Mm -hmm. We follow that up. Uh, tell me some things you're doing for yourself. Tell me some things you're doing uh, to stay in a positive mindset. And if we're at all getting our spidey senses tingling to, hey, something might be going going on here where they're, where they're not coping in, in a way that's, that's healthy or okay, taking that next step and saying, you know, there's some great services, there's some great, there's some great supports out there. What are some of those that you would recommend for Canadians um, to reach out to? CrisisServicesCanada.ca has all the information. Uh, we've got the Canadian Association for Suicide Prevention at SuicidePrevention.ca, where there's a full list of services for across Canada. So I, I would love for folks to check out some of those resources, whether for themselves, a uh, family member, a friend, and know that uh, we've really come together across the country to make sure that no matter the time of day, whether it's through chat, text, or phone, uh, that there's services ready and, and there for you. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Ben, for joining me again and for really setting the example of how, you know, we can't have a conversation about suicide openly and candidly. Thank you so much for covering this topic, guys. It's really important.